Hi, I'm Kim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WAM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this, the third video in our series about Alpha Zero middle game strategies. In it, Alpha Zero plays rather like Capablanca in the way it optimizes its position. This video also marks the third anniversary of the release of Chess for Life, which is the previous book that was written by Matthew and me. There it is. Um, Chess for Life features a chapter on Capablanca. Uh, Chess for Life is also about how players can develop their chess repertoires and continue enjoying the game throughout their chess career. So we've interviewed uh, about 10 top players from around the world um, in their 40s and 50s about how they keep chess fresh and how they've changed their openings and their play um, as their career develops. So um, uh, Capablanca was a player who uh, obviously world champion in the, in the 19, uh, 1920s, but uh, just in the 1930s, when he was already quite old, he, um, he, uh, he played uh, a number of great tournaments, taking on all the young guns like, uh, like Botvinnik and Keres and Floor, and scoring some incredible results. And uh, he was a big inspiration uh, uh, for me. And um, well, we did uh, we did some very nice uh, work on his games. And uh, well, what we're going to do, we're going to show you some games of uh, of his, where we show how he optimizes his position, and then we're going to show you a game of uh, Alpha Zeros against Stockfish that uh, well reminded us of that very very much indeed. So let's get into the video. So now we're going to get started on the games that we promised. And we're going to start off with the game Marder against Capablanca from 2000, from, uh, sorry, 1913. Um, so Marder had played the, uh, the opening, well, quite, uh, um, cautiously, I suppose, obviously trying to make a, um, a draw, I guess, against his, uh, illustrious opponent. Um, but just around uh, this phase, he, he overdid it a little bit and uh, went for um, a number of exchanges. And, uh, well, Capablanca actually made a few exchanges himself and went for um, for this position. And um, it looks kind of innocuous in a way, but um, but that's not really the whole story. It's actually a lot more awkward for White than you might think. We, in our book, Just for Life, we call this theme Relentless Elevation, and it refers to how Capablanca was able to make progress and push his pieces up the board when his opponent was making much less progress. We're indebted to the Russian master Shashin, who wrote a book called Best Play, a new method for discovering the strongest move. In it, he analysed many facets of Capablanca's play, and he highlighted how Capablanca seemed to be able to improve his position without the opponent being able to stop him. Fisher had an opinion on Capablanca's play, and he had a quote that was that Capablanca's trick was to keep his opening simple, and then to play with such brilliance in the middle game that the game was decided, even if his opponent didn't know it, before they arrived at the end game. Yeah, and this is, uh, I think, you know, the, the, in, indeed the true measure of uh, Capablanca's skill was that he understood very well which positions had long-term potential and which didn't. And um, in this particular position, he understood that uh, if Y didn't take some immediate concrete action, something like, for example, F3 to F4, um, maybe giving up a pawn in order to uh, to try and reach a... Um, a to try um, a holdable rook ending, then... White could really be in a, a great deal of trouble. And um, if you just look at, uh, at, at what happens, it, it, it feels at the end of the game as if Capablanca just, uh, you know, pushed all of his pieces just five ranks forward and uh, and uh, his opponent wasn't allowed to protest. You know, it's uh, let's have a look how that went. So King G2, H5, um, a very nice restricting move from uh, Capablanca, stopping the, uh, the White Knight from coming to G4. Rook D3 and then B4. Stopping the rook from coming to c3 or even to a3, attacking the pawn on a6. So two pawn moves and white's activity has been enormously restricted. Notice also that after f4, then uh, uh, black could play the move knight e2 um, when knight f4 check uh, fork threat will uh, will win a pawn. So um, Marder played h4 to stop g5, but that wasn't... Uh, actually going to stop Capablanca, who uh, 
organized G5 with his king. Takes, takes. And, uh, well, you notice how far forward the uh, the black king is compared to the white king. And, of course, H4 check is coming in, which, uh, you know, uh, at some moment, which could also just force the, uh, the white king back. And even worse than this, there's rook C1 coming in. Um, and this rook is now going to harass the uh, the white king from the back. It's probably already losing, and uh, this move doesn't help. Um, Capablanca just picks up the uh, the pawn on uh, on uh, on f2, and of course the uh, the white king can't come to g3 or to g1 uh, because knight on e2 is covering it. White went a3, black goes b3, a4, a5, and white resigned uh, because in actual fact he's in Zugzwang. If um, the king moves, for example, to h1, then knight g3 check wins the rook. And if something like rook d3, then knight f4 would uh, would just pick up a piece. I mean, it's quite incredible in just, uh, you know, 10, 12 moves that uh, you go from a, a, an ending position, which you think, oh, you know, that's sort of uh, fine for white to, you know, this sort of disaster. And um, yeah, this, this incredible ability to uh, to understand the long term uh, potential of a position and to uh, to play for that. Yeah, I mean, that's a great skill of, uh, of Capablanca. And there's another very nice example of this in uh, a game he played against two consultation opponents um, in uh, uh, um, in 1914. And this is the position after um, about move 29, I think. Um, so you can see that um, the Capablanca has been building up a nice initiative on the um, on the uh, uh, on the king side. Um, and uh, um, at this moment, uh, Capablanca decides that he's going to uh, tie black up a little bit more with a peace sacrifice. So after b takes c4, knight h7, knight takes rook h3, and bishop takes c4, threatening bishop takes g8, and then queen h7 mate. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the consultation opponents start blocking, trying to put everything in the way. Capablanca lines up a bit more against the uh, the king side, and rook a f seven. Now, I mean, there's quite a few tactical ways for white to win, but that's kind of not so important because what's interesting now is what uh, what Capablanca did. So Capablanca could look for tactical wins on the king side, and that might be what you'd immediately think of when you first see this position. Capablanca instead chooses the option that elevates his position to the maximum. He first of all considers how to improve his position. This is a quote from Shashin. He doesn't look for concrete forcing solutions until his position has been improved to the utmost. And uh, yeah, it's uh, quite bizarre. If you look at it, you think, well, how could White improve his position more than this? And yet Capablanca found the way. He played B3. And the idea of B3 is simply to create a pass pawn on the A file. And uh, well, I mean, uh, um, he's going to maybe uh, play a tactical solution later, but he'll also have a pass pawn that's about to queen. And in actual fact, what happens in the game is that, well, Black feels he can't allow that pawn to march. So diverts a, um, um, a defensive piece away, and then Capablanca rounds it off with uh, um, a, uh, um, an easy tactical win. Uh, if something like knight f4, then queen f6 check wins with mate. So, I mean, uh, um, just show that to you again, or just that little instant there with B3, A4. Amazing, uh, amazing vision, amazing uh, vision over the whole board and uh, oh, really shows the uh, the style of somebody who uh, who wants to get the maximum out of, uh, out of his position before taking any concrete action. And uh, in actual fact, in many ways, Bob Vinnick was, uh, was very similar to this, always wanting to, uh, to increase his strategical advantage to the maximum before playing for uh, for for a decisive attack and um this is something that we've um, that we've noticed in uh, um in alpha zero's games uh, uh, quite a bit so um uh, we're going to show you a um uh, a little game here a little extract of a game that uh, alpha zero played in the match against uh, against stockfish we've seen that capablanca's skill was to manoeuvre the opponent into a position which was without any long-term prospects and that his opponents probably didn't even realise it until it was too late. We'll see actually something similar in many of the games between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. Stockfish is steered into a position which looks fine 
uh, but it, in which only Alpha Zero manages to find a way of improving its position. It looks like Stockfish has been maybe even switched off for 15 moves. Yeah, it's, um, so this is one of these uh, Queen's Indian positions, which uh, Alpha Zero you know, plays so well, and uh, and where Stockfish you know really struggled uh, against Alpha Zero. And it's not that Alpha Zero was playing huge novelties; it's simply, I suppose, the the complexity of the struggle, the the amount of pawn structures you can have. You know, I mean, that's really uh, something very difficult to handle, and something that you know, Alpha Zero just handles very very well. So, in this position, um, I mean, Stockfish played reasonably um moving a knight to a to a reasonable square um doubling up rooks um i think anticipating some sort of action on the king side but you do start to think you know for um for for stockfish but yeah what what, what are you actually doing with those pieces where are you actually causing white any um any uh, any problems and um yeah in the end stockfish goes after the uh, the a pawn and actually alpha zero doesn't even worry about defending it already it's um um it's thinking that um what's coming on the king side is going to be decisive it's very impressive h4 it's all happening in slow motion somehow but i mean a move g5 and then f6 or g5 and g6 is um is really big so a last consolidating move rook f2 and then g5 hg and then this gorgeous little move queen uh, g4 and all of a sudden, um, uh, Stockfish sort of the evaluation started, uh, started panicking here. Um, and, uh, um, I mean, the idea is simply that if something like, uh, GH, we go rook G2, bishop F6, we take, take, and we go queen H5. And there are these massive threats of, um, of rook G6 and of knight G4 to H6 check. It's just an absolutely huge position. And the rooks are badly placed. The king's caught in the in the corner and actually this bishop on a4 is is really offside and doing nothing at all um so um at this point actually and uh yeah i mean check it on your machine at home but uh stockfish decided that uh the only way to, to to keep going um was to play b4 and distract i think the white rook by offering a piece but uh of course this was this was not uh um, anything particularly interesting and uh, actually alpha zero one in a couple of moves but it's that contrast between um just zooming back you know a position like this um where you sort of say oh well you know imagine both sides have got their have got their trumps and then you, t you look you know something like uh, 10 or 15 moves later and well there's only one side that's really made a a, a serious job of uh of, of activating their uh their trumps of making and creating any sort of danger with it and uh yeah i mean that really reminded us of um of uh, of capablanca's uh, skill so um anyway i hope you uh, hope you enjoyed i hope that gives you some more insights into uh into alpha zero's play and also you know just by relating it to uh to the play of a great player like uh, like uh, capablanca and uh of course you know uh, since this is uh, about uh, the third anniversary of our book uh, chess for life then uh, do have to say it is an absolutely lovely book so uh, if you enjoy game changer then uh, definitely i'd recommend taking a look at chess for life too okay thanks very much and uh, stay around we'll be making a lot more videos soon